everybody. Hope you guys are having a great day today. As you guys can tell from that quick little uh, montage there at the beginning, we're working on this today, right? So, obviously the engine's still stripped down, and it's down to basically a full bare long block. So, it's gonna be our job today to assemble this thing. Now, I did get a big order from FCP Arrow. Um, so let me go drag that box out and we'll, we'll dive into how this day is gonna stack up for us. We got a lot of stuff. I guess first step, here goes the valve cover. Gonna go back and torque them all to spec now, but uh, cool. I do have to clean the valve car. Valve car is still dirty since we pulled it off of that engine, but yeah. Damn, this thing's gonna just like actually be clean and not covering oil. This thing's kind of bad. I didn't realize how bad it was. That's hard to tell, but it's like black. So <laughs> not great, but yeah. Let me uh, I'll torque those bolts up. Clean this thing off, get a little quick little wipe down, and then, then we'll continue keeping on so we can clean the side of this block a little bit more. Decided to pull the plugs here, because uh well, haven't yet. A little crusty, that's for sure. Definitely a little crusty need to be replaced. These things were also in there tight. So yeah, I guess let's uh I know the ones in my car are good because I replaced them not long ago, so I'm honestly just gonna take those out of the 25 engine throw them in this. All right, coils are on. Looks good, looks shiny, minus a few little marks, but obviously it came off my other engine, so it's not exactly brand new, but it looks pretty damn good. So I guess that kind of brings me to my next thing on the agenda. I wanna go through and try to wire wheel some of this. I don't know how much of it's gonna come out. You have to get like up close to see, which I don't know how crazy I wanna go anyways. That's all going to be hidden under the manifold. You're never gonna see any of it. Which is why I'll probably take like five, ten minutes now. Just see what'll come out. If anything comes out, cool. If not, it's not the end of the world. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna give it a try and see if it works. Um, yeah, if it doesn't, whatever. We just we'll keep moving because it doesn't really matter. All right, things clean up a tiny bit better. Not crazy. Small little differences. But um, yeah, like you know, you could see the edges are definitely a bit shinier on the bolts and things. And yeah, I'm cool with it, I'm not picky. Like I said, you're never gonna see it. And this isn't exactly a show car, so I'm not gonna stress about it. Um, yeah, so I'm cool with that, that works with me. So I guess now, where I'd like to go from here, I think would be the oil pan. So I'm gonna clean the surface, get the oil pan prepped, ready to go on, and I have to put the oil pump locking nut on. Can't forget that, that's the biggest flaw about these things, because if the pump the nut backs off, spins, you're having a bad day. So, I have the aftermarket nut. I'll show you guys that in a second. But yeah, let me flip this thing over and I guess we'll start um, start getting ready to drop the oil pan on so this thing can stop uh, dripping oil at the bottom of it. All right, so I figured for you guys who aren't super familiar, right? So here's your oil pump nut. Obviously, it's just there. It's, just, it's literally just on the oil pump. So, what's known to happen is that nut will back off. Um, well, under like high RPMs and stuff, it's known to. Um, so, there's companies that make fixes. It's literally just a drilled out, the nut is drilled out, and then it has the wire. So, what you'll end up doing is tying the, walk, well, tying the wire through the sprocket right here, so it can't back off. Pretty simple concept, right? So I guess, uh, I've never done it. I'll just show you the quick little before and after for you guys who are interested. Not like it's a crazy hard job. Well, I guess getting the engine out takes uh, takes some work, but it's not exactly a super hard thing. So now, if you guys uh, weren't aware, maybe you learned something. Today. All right, as you guys could see now, real simple. Damn, my lighting's not great right now, huh? Focus. There we go. Uh, as you guys could see, 
I did a twist on the outside of it. I looped the two back behind the sprocket and then twisted them again right on the outside and just put it up against there. Um, yeah, real simple. I also put Loctite on the nut. Um, for those of you guys who are doing this, it's reverse threaded uh, to 18 foot pounds or 25 newton meters. So yeah, take it for what you will. But I guess now then, it's time to get the oil pan on the engine. Just like that, right? Cool, oil pan's now on. This thing's starting to look good. We're not leaking oil anymore onto the floor, which is nice. But we have one more thing uh, that we need to address that has to do with the oil system in this. So, if we walk to the side, yes, we're still upside down, <laughs> but the oil filter housing right here, bam, that guy. Last thing we gotta do, we gotta take that apart, put the gasket in, um, probably gonna drip some oil. That should theoretically be the last time we're dripping oil out of this thing for right now or hopefully ever. I don't want this thing to leak any more damn oil. So, yeah, I guess we'll uh, tackle that. And yeah, we're, we're buzzing right along. This is good, this is good, progress. Oh, okay, it's cool, it's pretty dry. Okay. Yeah, here comes the oil. Oh. This is what it is, right? It's not much. It will have to get cleaned, obviously. Oh. Oh, there's that. Uh, I gotta struggle. I know you guys can't see your action. I'll just show you. Duh up in that port and that port is the hard coolant lines that broke off. So now it's gonna be my fun to struggle and um, try to get those out. Not looking forward to that right now. It's gotta be done, hopefully I could figure out a way and it just works nice and easy. Otherwise this is gonna suck. All right, just cleaned up the gasket, uh, section of the housing I guess here. Uh, I did get the two coolant pipe bits out. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but I sh uh, sprayed some silicone spray at it. I don't know if that really helped. Maybe it did. Otherwise it was just a screwdriver just kind of prying up against the surface and chipping out a little bit of the gasket uh, at a time until it all came out. Uh, thankfully obviously it's all old brittle coolant hard pipes that are plastic so they fall apart pretty good. I thought it was going to be worse than it was. So. All right, time to uh, get the housing back on. And then I think maybe at that point I'll start to do the coolant stuff since I'm already kind of on this path. So water pump thermostat, hard pipes, knock out the coolant system. All right, so in order to finish the front end of that engine, I need the water pump and the thermostat off of this. I replaced them relatively free, uh, not that long ago, so I'm going to take them off this engine. My thought process here is if I keep the engine tilted back while it's in the air suspended, I won't lose coolant out the front. Theoretically. Um, so yeah, let's, let's find out if this is a good or a bad idea. Okay, forget that the thermostat gets held in partially of course, that would have been really stupid. Okay, well, unfortunately, then this has to go down. Okay. Oh, man. There it goes. Oh, we're chilling, actually. There's nothing in there. I got... Okay, well, that's... That's good. We got that. That was one of the two things we needed. The other thing we need, water pump. I'm a little less confident about the water pump, but hang on, let me resituate, because that one I can't have up in the air for. Oh, okay. Dig it a little bit. All right. 
did definitely get a little bit of cooling around, but honestly, I think that worked out. I think that was a pretty smart idea. I'm going to take credit for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that was a good idea. A little bit's on the ground, not much. Cool. Very good. So I guess now, uh, yeah, I'll put the other, the other water pump in. Whoops. The other water pump in the old engine. Put my old parts, new parts, into that engine, and then that'll be a uh, coolant system will be ready to go. Uh, I might also get a jump on it too. I want to steal the power steering pump off of this engine because I've also replaced that, and I want to take the alternator because I know the alternator works. So building of the three liter now is kind of just taking the parts that I know worked for me and they haven't given me a problem or because I've replaced them all. <laughs> I've replaced just about everything on this engine already. So taking all those things, putting it on the 2.5 or the three liter. So everything should theoretically work when it comes time to it. But all right, yeah, I will get the coolant system bundled up and probably start diving into the power steering. All right, got good news. I bought a parts washer. Let me take you on over, show you we're gonna take care of the power steering stuff, right? Here we go. All right, good. We're down here on the ground. Parts washer. All right. It's been a little while. I got all of the accessories on. Even put the belt on. Everything is a hell of a lot cleaner than it was. Not perfect. Not perfect but it's pretty damn good. So I'm happy about that. Now, it's again, we're losing daylight here. It's 6.25 at night. Um, I should've got an earlier start this morning. Whoops. I'd like to try to get the intake manifold on. But, so I'm gonna be running an M50 manifold. Um, I have to tap some holes and things, so I want me to get the parts set up and situated, and we'll dive into exactly what I have to do. All right, I'm gonna actually end up calling it here. Um, I didn't realize that I have the wrong Allen key for the um, filling Allen screws, whatever. Um, but the kit does give us a, a tap. So shout out to Pullman Auto Sports. He made gave me this kit, kit super quick. Uh, so real quick, because I'd like to see the manifold on the on the engine. I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna mock it up. Um, and then we'll end it off here for today. I'll pick it up probably tomorrow or next weekend, something like that. Sweet. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess that's gonna be the look, huh? Essentially. I'm gonna need to grab the headers. Oops. Headers from this engine down there, but yeah, I guess that's uh, that's everything on this one. So yeah, I'm going to uh, call it a day for tonight because it's like seven o'clock. I forgot this is the first day of daylight savings. Now it's way later, way later, which is cool. But I have totally lost track of time for today, so I should probably get inside, eat some food, and get ready for my work week now. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for today, guys. I hope you all enjoy it. Well, no, no, we're not gonna end the video. I'm sorry. We'll we'll finish the engine uh, over the coming day. So I'll see you then. All right, it's later in the day. It is beautiful out today. It's like 70 degrees out here in Minnesota. Um, I want to finish this up today. Just the manifold, at least. Honestly, it's getting kind of late in the day. Uh, I got a lot of things I still need to get done. So probably gonna film much. So I'll give you guys a after shot. Okay, that's on, as you guys just saw, torque to two spec. So, with that said, I gotta turn my music off. <laughs> with that said, um, yeah, that's gonna do it for today. I wanted to get the exhaust manifold done, but it got dark. 
and I it took a while and now it's 7.45 and I still got things to do tonight so it is what it is. We'll end this here and then hopefully the exhaust manifolds potentially tomorrow. All right, here we are again. It is now day three of trying to uh, <laughs> finish up this engine build here. As you guys can see, still have nothing on the side of the engine. That's because the headers are still on that engine. So today's plan of attack and this should finish it up, right? Uh, it's not gonna finish it up, but it'll, it'll end this video. Um, want to get the headers off that engine, put it on this engine, and then this engine's essentially all complete besides I gotta put the wiring here towards the end when I put everything up, and I just gotta put the injectors in. So, aside from all that, uh, oh, and technically the throttle body if I want to go crazy. But, that'll essentially finish this, so uh, yeah, let's get, let's get these headers off the engine. All right, that's done. Now, let's try this again. And there we go, just like that. Headers are, they're not hard mounted. I realized I forgot to order gaskets. So, they're just placed on. But I'm not gonna keep this video dragging on for more days than it needs to, right? We're already at, I think, day three. So, we're just gonna, you guys got to see it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get the gaskets and everything. Uh, I think then the last thing in this video will be a montage of, I guess, the final product of the engine. Um, yeah, whenever I get those gaskets in, I'll do that. But otherwise, I mean, yeah, uh, engine, I guess, is basically all there. I mean, I, like I said, the injector's got to go in. That's got to get rotated things. And yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm looking forward to getting it in the bay, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's all, it's all good and all shiny, so either way, sorry this video got kind of dragged on, long-winded. If you guys made it this far, I appreciate you guys, you guys killed it. Um, that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.